Let me wax and tap that ass, bump and grind, show you attention. Just as a cold motherfucker, they didn't mention my intention to put you in my movie, my duty. To find the finest hoes, do give up the straight booty. Drive around town, putting it down to my latest sounds as I freestyle. Where we're now, J. Steve, I put it down. Out to get Mucho De Niro. You know J. Steve is your porn superhero. As I pursue bitches and I pursue riches, I shake snitches. They wind up in ditches with stitches because I give a fuck about a bitch. That's what I'm about. I'm Jake's the motherfucker with the diamonds in the cluster, nigga. Bitch, don't trust Don't trust no bitch. Don't trust no hoe. That's the way. Happy birthday, Jake! Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's my birthday. And you know what I'm saying? Everybody's late. There's supposed to be 10 other people here right now. Where they go? All right, so check this out, right? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for tapping into Sofa Juice. And on this platform, we'll be discussing adult industry things. We're more so an emphasis on the older eras in 80s, 90s, early 2000s. I mean, we'll still delve into a lot of the modern stuff, but uh, there's going to be more emphasis on the older content. Because the older content is what made it possible for a lot of people to exist today. On that note, at this point, we all know who Jake Steed is. And if you don't know, then you may want to get caught up to speed. I won't be going into the backstory of the legal situation because I don't know much about it beyond the scope of YouTube. On this platform, we plan to focus on the um, contributions that he made to the industry and um, he pioneered a lot of things that uh, people are still using to this day in terms of content creating so as a result we like to show appreciation to it as a fan of the adult entertainment industry and culture and the history it pertains to i felt it's only right that i talk about one of the biggest icons in pushing the culture forward in regards to the corn industry his most known body of work became the precursor for many websites and modern day content creators as we know it. As we know, Jake previously, um, he mysteriously vanished as a result of his issues, which led to new ownership of the company. Once obtained by new owners, the content changed and it dabbled off the beaten path of his original formula. For example, under the newly owned Jake Steve Productions, scene was a series of compilation videos that were just rehashes of his actual bodies of work that he recorded previously when he was actually running the company so they were just hand picking scenes out of freaks holes and flows and the other videos and just making new compilations and re-releasing it so my knowledge the last um, episode that he um, started organically was episode 27 of freaks holes and flows I know the later episodes, they had this ghost-like character. It was someone with a white sheet on the head claiming to be Jake. And it was also accompanied by vocal narration of the scenes that was allegedly Jake. But we don't know if it was really him or if it was just a gimmick to keep the fans interested. Nonetheless, uh, Jake's contribution to Corn was and still is highly significant because his platform was the first to bridge the gap between the mainstream corn industry and the hood with a rare blend of hip hop themed gonzo based reality style content with just a hint a little bit of a little, little bit of comedy or maybe a lot of comedy in some of the episodes later on the influence of that series was seen in a plethora of uh, urban corn websites such as uh the now defunct rap auditions or rap video auditions or something like that, I forget the name of it. It was a series of uh, sites that popped up as a result. And a lot of those sites that were popping up were actually, uh, not a lot, but some of them were actually mainstream sites that were kind of going undercover, just taking his formula and running with it. But you also had a lot of organic grassroots websites as well. And uh, I'm not gonna delve into that I saved that for another episode, but they definitely played a big role into where it is today. So they definitely deserve their flowers. Of course, absolutely. But um, you see, I did mention um, the word Gonzo. I don't know if y'all familiar with Gonzo is, but let me just run it down real quick. Gonzo is a genre of corn that is shot with emphasis on up close angles. 
It's a style that's usually associated with amateur corn creators due to the POV angles often implemented in the scenes. And this style of adult content creating is contrasted by a more generic style of uh, videography where the video shots are not as in depth. The genre of Gonzo was actually pioneered by two legends. Um, it's up for debate who had it first. It's between the late great Jamie Gillis, rest in peace, and Ed Powers, who was known for his long running series, Dirty Debutantes. And people are like, Dirty Debutantes, Ed Powers. So, I, what does that got to do with Jake Steve, right? But keep in mind, Jake, in a lot of his early. Uh, Early on, he started in a lot of those episodes, assisting Ed Powers doing the work in the series um, Dirty Debutantes. Then later on, Jake took the game from for Ed Powers and he applied it, and then he came up with Freak Souls and Flows. So he had, still had that kind of reality style, but it was he took it to the hood. You know what I mean? Like he he went in a different direction with it. In addition to um, Freak Souls and Flows, another series that uh, played an instrumental role in in bridging those gaps was um, HT's Black Street Looker series with um, legendary talent TT Boy. And sometimes this series actually featured the same actresses as Freak Souls and Flows. But see, the thing is, back in the, um, in the mid 90s, early 2000s, more so the mid 90s, like the idea of a corn star slash rapper owning all of his series and his movies and music, his whole catalog, just owned it at one point. Like, that was unheard of. So it was groundbreaking to see someone doing it like that. It's like, this dude was independent, came out the wazoo, and just was owning stuff, you know? Yeah, even years after Jake was gone, his format was repeated. But it didn't live up to the efforts of the original Free Souls and Flows, none of the efforts. Um, for example, Brian Pumper later came along with a series called Fatty's Rhymes and Dimes. And it was a pretty cool series, but it didn't measure up to Free Souls and Flows. I, I, I think the one thing that Brian Pumper had that I will give him is his ability to bring new talent in consistently. Every episode he had new talent back to back to back to back. And that's the one thing that I'll give him that was comparable to the way Jake was doing it back in the day. But other than that, I feel like Brian Pumper, like it was, it's like he was trying too hard. But yeah, Freak Souls and Flows, it also launched the career of um, the legendary, iconic corn actress, Marie Love. And uh, her body of work is among the upper echelon. Her name rings bells among the greats at this point. And if you don't know who Marie Love is, then you really need to grab your backpack, your pad, and your pen and do your homework. Because she's, she's made waves for years up to this point. Bling, bling. What's up? That was part 24. And you see me here just flossing my CD. You know what I'm saying? Just reminding y'all what's really going on, what's cracking, so you don't miss out on it. Remember, you want to buy this. It's tight. It's the best songs I got on my whole series, part 1 through 25. I couldn't fit them all on the tape, so I just used the best ones. You know what I'm talking about? That's why it's called Jake's Steve's Latest and Greatest. And believe me, they're all my latest and greatest. It's a collector's item. You don't want to miss this shit. And you can order it on 866-BY-JAKE, 866-289-5253. And while I'm there, what does it say? You may be the lucky winner in the Jake Steve contest and be flown out to L.A. to star in an episode of Freaks, Hoes, and Flows. CJSteed.com for details. Buy the motherfucking CD. It's a collector's item. And what I was saying, in 23, in case you didn't hear me or feel me, if you want to win and get the gold CD, you have to buy it from me. Just that simple. Because this thing is probably going to be in the record store soon. So you could probably pick it up in the record store for, you yeah, know, Sixteen ninety five, seventeen ninety four, whatever, whatever. But I mean, why wait? Plus, you won't see these gold CDs in the record store CD. No, I can't do it like that. You know, we got a massive distribution deal. Cheese is being made. Fuck that. But for my fans that buy it from me, you can actually win if you get the gold CD.
and I will fly you out and your dreams will come true. Nonetheless, he had this contest going where he was incentivizing buyers to buy into what he was selling and he would fly him out. And, and what's interesting is that template is still used to this day with some of your OF models, some of the you know, models that are on OnlyFans, et cetera, et cetera, where they have a raffle with their subscribers and, you know, okay, if the subscriber picks out the right ticket number or buys all the content and this, that, and the third, you know, then, you know, they'll screen him and make sure he's safe and secured and fly him out to a location and shoot the content and put it on our OnlyFans page. And to my knowledge, Jake was the first one to do it. He was the first one to put it in. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's interesting to see that. So there's a lot of things that he did that became the precursor for what we see now today in the, in, in the industry. So on that note, um, I don't want to talk your ear off. That's pretty much it, but that's all I got for this topic. And, uh, on that note, um, Signing off, this is Dion. Thank you for listening to Sofa Juice.